Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Charlotte Day. Welcome to this live webinar that is being organized as part of the Humber Apprenticeship Showcase, powered by SpringPod. Before we begin, it is useful to know that this talk should last about 30 to 40 minutes. Don't forget to use the Q&A function to ask questions to your guests today. They'd love to answer them and they are here to help. So definitely make the most of this time. Due to the number of questions that usually come through, we may not be able to answer every single one. So please use the upvote function if you spot a question that you also wanted to ask. We'll be choosing from the top voted questions or the most top voted questions. It's the little thumbs up underneath each question and the most popular will rise to the top of the list. If you do miss this webinar or you need to leave halfway through for whatever reason, we have got you covered. This is being recorded and we always aim to have the recording available within 24 hours so you can come back and watch it on demand. In today's webinar, we are going to be talking about Northern Power Grid and joining us to do that is Aaron Barwick. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Now, Aaron, you are an apprentice at Northern Power Grid and you have a presentation prepared. So when you are ready, please begin. OK. Afternoon, everyone. Um, I've been asked today just to give a brief presentation to um, the apprenticeship, apprenticeship that Northern Power Grid offer. Um, I'm an apprentice myself. I'm currently halfway through my, um, my three-year apprenticeship. Um, so I'll dive straight into the slides and uh, hopefully you find it useful. So as, as, um, as I've said previously, a little bit about me. So I'm second year apprentice electrical fitter. Um, previous to that, I had a 15 year career, career in ICT at Hull University. Um, I joined Northern Power Grid in November 2019. Um, the reason I joined was, quite frankly, that I, I wanted a career change. I wanted something new and challenging. I wanted to put my hands to use. Um, you know, previously stuck in an office, I just um, thought, what can I do that's a complete different career change, something challenging? And, yeah, fortunately, I, uh, I became a successful uh, apprentice. Um, so a little bit about Northern Power Grid. Um, our role, we're, we're we're not a utility provider, so people often mistake us for um, a utility. So we don't sell electric. We're not like your Empowers, your Scottish Power. We're the backbone um, to the power network. So we're responsible for the power network that distributes electricity to 8 million customers um, and nearly 4 million homes across North East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Um, Within that network, we have 63,000 substations and over 60,000 miles of overhead lines and underground cables spanning nearly 10,000 square miles. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of upkeep on these, um, a lot of pressure to, to keep the network working. Um, the team is made up of 2,700 employees. Um, and to put simply, we're there to make sure the electricity you buy from your chosen energy supplier gets to you safely whenever you need it. If your power ever gets interrupted, for whatever reason that might be, um, weather um, or emergency maintenance, uh, we'll be there to fix it night or day, rain or shine, 365 days a year. And that does include Christmas Day. Um, so I've got a little uh, diagram here which shows um, the, the power grid. Um, so in the top left-hand corner, you've got the power generation. Um, we don't... We don't get involved until the electricity comes off the national grid. So that top row there where you can see it's 400 kV and 275, that's from the generation where it's passed to us from the national grid. So national grid, you'll see in the countryside, the steel um, pylons that you can see. And we don't get involved at them stages. We get involved once it's stepped down via transformers to 132 kV. Um, which is then passed through primary substations, for factories, secondary substations, um, and eventually it's stepped down to 11 kV. And then when it reaches your house, it's 240 volts. Um, so there's a lot of voltage involved there. So you can appreciate that 240 volts is enough to kill you. Um, and we work right up to 133,000 volts. Um, so it's, uh, it's certainly uh, can be a dangerous industry, but... Fortunately, all the procedures are in place uh, to keep us safe. Um, so I'll just move on to the next slide. So the craft apprenticeship 
It's um, a program that lasts for three years. It's a mixture of practical experience, professional training, and block release study. Um, you study at college, Tyne Met College, where you'll gain uh, recognised courses, um, and you're also trained in workshops, um, sort of on, on the different sites that we've got around uh, around the area. Um, there's a lot of benefits. So the starting salary is quite competitive, I think, for an apprenticeship. It's uh, currently about eighteen and a half thousand pound. You can, after two years, that does start rising. Um, you're given 25 days annual leave, which again rises to 28 upon completion of the apprenticeship. Um, the full training program is provided. Um, everything you need for the job, um, tools, PPE, clothing, work van. Um, I've been given my work van at Christmas. Um, so I've had it coming up six months now and that's fully kitted out. It's not cost me a penny. Um, all the appropriate um, uniform is provided. Um, this top I've got on at the minute, this is uh, it's Northern Power Grid um, clothing, but it's actually protected with arc flash. So the PPE is there as a last line of defense, um, but it's, it's made with a non-conductive fire resistant material and uh, when we're working live we're required to have two layers on so you'll often see uh, northern power grid um, employees out in the field with red jumpsuits and um, because that's the secondary layer and um, hopefully it's never needed but it's there to protect us if need be the application process um, for me it was quite a simple straightforward procedure um, I just by chance came across the, uh, the the advert purely through boredom from my previous job. I was just browsing the um, the, the, jo the job boards and um, noticed th they were hiring. Um, so I filled out an online application. It was about two hour two hour online form, um, just basically questions based on your experience, qualifications, what you'd maybe do in certain scenarios. Um, and that was that, that was then submitted. Um, a few weeks later, fortunately, I headed back and got invited to an assessment day. So this was an assessment day in Castleford. Um, and during the assessment day, you split into teams of five or six. And throughout the day, you, you have six or seven tasks. Each task is designed um, f for, the, for Northern Power Grid to judge how well you do under pressure. Um, you, hand-to-eye coordination, how well you perform within a team, and most importantly, how you follow instructions because um, safety is the number one priority within Northern Power Grid. Um, and we have to follow instructions at all times to keep ourselves and our colleagues safe. Um, that was a great day, to be honest. I enjoyed it. It was my first sort of exposure to, to the power industry. I'd never had any real previous experience. Like I said, I'd worked in ICT. Um, it was a challenging day, but it, it was um, certainly, certainly, I felt it was rewarding. Um, some of the tasks involved, one of them was um, you got equipped in a harness and you went up a ladder, um, just up a about 15 foot wooden telegraph type pole. Um, and that was just to assess whether you could um, perform, perform at heights really, because um, part of, uh, part of the, the job role or one of them in particular can be uh, working at heights at all times and um, there's teamwork teamwork tasks uh wiring plugs um there was a wiring diagram to follow written instructions and um, things like that really it was all everything was presented in a way that you couldn't really do you you, you couldn't really go wrong if you followed the instructions um and then third and foremost there was a drug and alcohol test this was after I'd been offered the role um, within The Apprentice because Northern Power Grid does have a strict zero alcohol and drug use within the workplace. Um, because of the nature of our work, obviously, um, it's, it's, there's a, it's a high-risk environment. Um, unfortunately, there has been fatalities in the past. Um, so now, whenever there's, a, there's an accident, first thing, drug, drug, um, drug and alcohol test. Um, to make sure there's no drugs in your system and obviously it goes without saying you don't turn up to work uh, under the influence of alcohol. Um, so yeah, that was the, the application process. Um, it started for me in the March 
the assessment day was in the May and that was to start in the November of that year. Um, so within within 10 months from, from application, I'd, I had started. Um, my first week, you get invited away. They call it a Northern Power Grid Best Welcome Week. Um, you spend a week up in Spennymoor in the north. Um, everything's provided, hotels provided. You're reimbursed for your transport costs, petrol costs, etc. cetera. Um, and basically, the aim of the week is uh, to go through all the in introductions and get to know your managers, get to know um, everything about the company, give you a bit of background to the owners of the company. Um, and then you also, you there's a lot of team um, team bonding exercises. So because we was at a, a um, fire station, it was uh, it was really really good actually. The uh, one of the icebreakers was the split you into teams. Um, you had to quickly assemble fire hose, um, and the losing team got got wet basically. Um, the, the winning team got to spray the losing team with a uh, industrial size fire hose, and um, so things like that really just to sort of break the ice, get get to know your colleagues. There was thirty apprentices on my intake that week. And there'd been another 32 the week before, so they're, you know, they as a, as a company they're they're always looking at a work, workforce renewal. There's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, opportunity there for, uh, for 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 new apprentices. Um, another part of that week was to get fitted out for uniform and all your PPE. Um, as I've touched upon the uniform, um, your PPE, you've got your um, rubber sole boots, you've got gloves, you've got eyewear, you've got hats, uh, with um, hard hats with ear defenders, um, you've got then pull-down visors and um, rub rubber gloves because um, working live, you have to, we have to have two layers on, we have to have our visor and we have to have our rubber gloves to, to make us as safe as possible. Um, also during that week, you get all your college dates. Um, you spend a bit of time in college the first year, um, 12 weeks in total. Uh, so it was a block of six. And then it was, a, I had another six weeks back in my um, home base training in-house and then another six weeks away at college. Um, so you get every, everything you need basically for, for the first year you, you're given in that first welcome week. Um, and then after that, what you do is you spend a week with, it's called trade appreciation. So within the apprenticeship, there's the three routes essentially that you can you can go down um, once you're within Northern Power Grid. Um, and it just depends on your skills um, and also what vacancies there are in the company. Um, so there's the, the, the three fields of uh, three different areas are you've got cable jointers, so they're typically your guys who are down your street. If you've got a power cut, you might see them digging a hole. They're there repairing service cables, um, street lamps, etc. cetera. Um, you've then got electrical fitter, which is what I've become. And we, we maintain the equipment that's housed in substations. So some of you might be aware of what a substation looks like. You might have driven past primary substations. Um, if you've ever got close enough to one, you'll hear them humming away. And um, so we maintain all the all the equipment within with, that's housed within the substations. And uh, third and foremost, you've got the option to become a linesman. So these are your guys who are going up your uh, your up your poles, um, repairing the overhead lines, installing transformers at the top of um, poles, etc. These guys tend to be sort of more based. Um, in rural areas, because obviously a lot of the overhead lines are countryside, whereas you you get into um, the city and a lot of the cables are underground. Um, so it's a real mixture, really, and you, you, you can feed back to the company which area you'd prefer to work in. Um, obviously, they assess your skills and they uh, pick your suitability, your suitability for each one. Um, so that's actually me on my trade appreciation um that was the, the during the landsman week so i'm up there um with a harness you get spikes on your boots to climb and uh, that's the instructor on the right hand side that's me on the left and that task was basically applying applying some mess to the overhead lines um it was good it was uh, to be honest I, I thought i had a fear of heights 
Um, but once I was in all my safety gear, I absolutely loved it up there. There was no fear, fear whatsoever. Um, I think I've got another couple of pictures. So again, that was during the Larsman week. Um, so that's just on some miniature poles, just to test um, your ability to get up there and set up some of the typical equipment that you'd be you'd be working with. Um, and once again, applying applying Fs. So you you practice at ground height, and then you'd go on the higher poles and practice upper pole. Um, so yeah, the appreciations. It gives you a good taste of what each um, each trade does. Gives you an overview. You spend a week with um, with a trainer, and you get involved in all aspects of that particular role. And you're then given an option to feedback at the end of the week what what bits you thought you, you know you enjoyed. Uh, would you like to do that trade in future? And then after that, the company will then sit down, um, assess all the feedback from the appreciation weeks and then you're basically um, told which trade you're going to um, specialise in for the remainder of your apprenticeship. Like I say, for me, it was um, to become an electrical fitter, which which I was uh, overjoyed with, to be honest. It was the one I wanted. Um, so the training, um, after that, you, you know, you're giving your dates for your training. Um, it's like I say, it's a mixture. Um, so we did, we spent 12 weeks to two six week box away at time met college and again everything's paid for college um you, um you, your your um hospitality is all looked after up there um there's you you you're basically away for six weeks travel there on the monday morning come back the friday night um and by the end of the 12 weeks of time met you walking walking away with what is essentially sitting sitting gills equivalent in electrical theory so again that gives everyone the best possible start to the role really because you're given enough training to get to be able to understand all concepts of electrical theory like i say, I, I came from a background of ict i didn't have any previous electrical um knowledge and um, fortunately this training provided me with everything i needed um, and that's around a mixture of classroom-based trainings as well. So we've got workshops which replicate a lot of on-site scenarios. So for us as fitters, it was um, taking apart gear, um, repairing it, looking for faults, all the different types of equipment that we'd potentially see on site. Um, and then you've got also, you've got some external training as well. Um, Northern Power Grid are big on safety, so they'll send you away on an IOSH course. Um, you spend a lot of time in your vans, so we added a three-day advanced driving training. Um, again, just helping you um, spot potential hazards on the roads, um, fine-tune your driving really, um, and a towing towing course as well. Um, with tow trailers about, with tow gear, um, you can be driving bigger equipment than vans. So again, it's all. Um, it's all transferable life skills for me that you can take with you. It's not just, uh, you're not just tra training for stuff specific to the role. It's, uh, I think it benefits you as a person as well. Um, and then further, furthermore from years one, years two and three, you basically you're on site, you're paired with a team. So at the minute I'm paired with um, a fitter team um, and we're just, I, I'm shadowing them and as, as you progress, um, you you're then given a bit more. When you can prove through experience, you're then given a um, sort of more responsibility as the, as the years progress, um, and you can start to do a little bit more, um, and you're trusted a little bit more. And then at the end of the third year, or middle towards the end of the third year, you do an endpoint assessment. Um, so for me, that's going to be next April, whereas I'll, I'll go away and hopefully I've um, I've learned enough enough on the roll to be assessed for a week. Um, and basically, I'll, I'll have to prove that I can do the job um, out of my apprenticeship. Um, so, so, yeah, I think, like I say, everything's everything's covered in your training. Um, there's loads of um, opportunity to um Ask, ask for help if you're struggling. Um, 
you know, I can't see any reason why anyone wouldn't pass their endpoint assessment. At the end of the day, that's what the company want want you to do, um, and everything's provided for you. Um, and I think that just about covers everything that I've got in the um, in the presentation. So hopefully that was useful. Um, that was really useful. Thank you so much. That was such a great presentation. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to ask you the questions because our viewers have been very keen and we've got lots of questions that have come through. Um, right. So the first one I want to ask is what advice would you give anyone looking to get started? Um, it's a good question, actually. And um, fortunately for me, I had um, I had a friend who works for Northern Power Grid and I asked him the very same, same question before I started. And he just basically said, if you can go on YouTube and start grasping some sort of electrical theory knowledge, um, even in its most simplest form, it's going to give you a head start. Um, like I said, there's, there's no um, there's no requirements that you you know you need to be um, have an electrical history. Like I say, I didn't. So it just depends on on you as a person, really. If you want to go out and maybe get a head start, you can. There's, there's loads of uh, videos out there on YouTube for you know electrical theory, sort of um, concepts of of it, such as Ohm's law and um, things like that. You can you can you know give yourself a real real advantage before the college work would start. Fantastic. Um, okay, let's move on to the next question, which I think you answered at the very very beginning, um, yes. and I think a few people may have missed it. So, how long have you been training for? Um, so I started training in November 2019. So I'm just coming up probably about halfway through my apprenticeship now. Um, so my first year finished last November um, and I've been out on site since Christmas. So I've had about six months on site experience and one year of classroom and college based training. Amazing. And the entire apprenticeship is uh, three years, did you say? Correct. Yeah, it's three years. So you, you do your end point sort of mid mid to the end of your third year. And that's basically um, uh, so a load of interviews and um, competency based uh, tasks to just to prove that, you know, you can do the job going forward, essentially. Perfect. OK, let's move on to the next question, which is, is the college work done in one block? Uh, no, it's split over two. So um, for me, for me, I mean, I've, I've got a, I've got a young family, um, and I'll be honest. I thought oh, I'm going to be away twelve weeks, but that's not the case. Um, you you know, we travel down on the Monday. You back the well, you finish at lunch on the Friday. We did. So I was back home by the Friday Friday afternoon, um, and it's split into two blocks. So you do your first six weeks, then you'll come back and do some more in house training. Uh, depending on where you're based, so for me, I'm based in Hull, and my we've got a yard in Hull, so I did a lot of my in-house training actually in Hull, um, and then did my second block at college. So it's, it was split over two blocks, which makes it a lot more manageable as well, because between them blocks, you get feedback through your college tutors, and it, you know if there's any anything that maybe uh, you're struggling with, the, the, the tutors are there to help you remotely. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, one block would have been a long time away. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then we have uh, another question, which is, what is your favourite part of the job? For me, it's um, every day is different. Um, like I said, I previously, I, I worked in an office, and I don't mean to disrespect anyone who works in an office, but I, I used to find myself clock watching. I'd be, I'd be sat there bored, um, whereas now every day is different. I'm in new locations. I'm driving through the countryside. I'm seeing, I mean, even in Hull, I'm seeing areas of Hull that I've never I've never knew existed. Um, so, yeah, every day is different. And my, my office changes, you know, every week I can be, I can be working somewhere new. And it's just, I find it really refreshing. Yeah, it's exciting when every day is a little bit different. Yeah. I, I was the same in an office job. I kept looking at the clock and I thought, it's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now we're moving on to our last question, unless we have any others. So everybody watching, if you have any other questions, please send them through now. Um, so the final question is, what happens if you fail the assessment? Um, if you fail your assessment, you then you are given reach out, uh, uh, you know, more opportunities to pass it. And they're not going to kick you out. You know, they're investing a lot of time and effort into you as an apprentice. You know, three years um, worth of your time, but also the amount of resources that they've pumped towards you. They're not, you're not kicked out or anything like that. Um, 
there's there's many assessments as you're going through the apprenticeship um and again if you if you're struggling with them or if you fail them um they just give you some feedback give you a bit more time and so you know you'll maybe come back in a month or two to uh re, re reassess yourself really that's amazing that's really good it's good to know that if anything does happen where you don't pass they don't say okay bye <laughs> no no you're fully supported every, you know every step of the way you're supported you've got um you've got a, a line manager um who, who's so solely responsible for looking after apprentices apprentices so you can you know if you've got any concerns you can speak to them at any time it's uh, it's a really supportive company amazing so that is uh the final question that we have um actually i have a question what yep. is the, sort of the minimum age that you can start this um you can i'm not sure what the minimum is i think it's 18 um, yeah most likely i would assume and if you're under 21 there's certain aspects of the job you can't do um so you're not allowed to drive um a three and a half ton van which is um, your typical van so you'll be given a smaller van um you're not allowed to work on live electricity which to be honest you, you do you don't do a great deal with in your first three years anyway um so you know if you was to join at 18 by the time you come out your time you you're there or thereabouts sort of 20 you know 21 um so there's not really too many restrictions if you are under 21. Um, one thing I will say though as well is, um, I mean, I, I entered the apprenticeship at 34. I thought, you know, 34 year old, uh, becoming an apprentice, I'll be the oldest person in the room. That wasn't the case. We had um, a real mixed range of um, uh, ages on the intake. We had people fresh out of college at 18. Whereas I think the other end of the scale, we had uh, a guy who was 52 and yeah. Similar circumstances to me, just wanted a change, you know, and so yeah, there was a real, real, real variety of uh, of age, uh, men and women as well. You know, people people um, might think it's predominant, predominantly a male oriented industry. Uh, it's not the case anymore. There's a lot more females coming through. So really, I, I don't see any reason why it could hold anyone back. That's amazing. I mean, it's so nice to hear you've had such a positive experience so far. Um, so I'm sure along with everyone watching, I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your apprenticeship. Um, you. so that brings us to a wrap on this session. Thank you to everyone watching for all of your questions. There were some really, really great ones. And of course, thank you so much for taking the time to be here, Aaron. We really, no, really appreciate it. No problem, my pleasure. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the Humber Apprenticeship Showcase and we will see you all soon.